Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new all-in-one whoop style flight controllers by Nameless LC. In this video I'm going to go over their features and specs, show you how to set them up and then assemble one of them on a whoop frame and head doors and test it out. The flight controllers that I'm going to review are available in two versions, the all-in-one 412 and the all-in-one 412T. The main difference between the versions is the orientation of the micro USB port. On the 412T version it is parallel to the board like a traditional flight controller and on the 412 version it is positioned at 90 degrees. So the 412 version is intended to be used with quadcopters where you need to access the flight controller either from the top or from the bottom and you can use the 412T version in conjunction with traditional micro frames. Another difference between the boards is that the soldering pads on the 412T version are bigger and easier to work with than the 412. In addition, on the 412 version, you can only find these holes for the motor connectors, whereas on the 412T version, you can find the same holes, but next to them, bigger pads for directly soldering your motors. Finally, with both flight controllers, you are getting rubber spacers, screws, and connectors for the motors in case you chose the version that doesn't come with pre-soldered ones. However, the 412T version also comes with a 470 microfarad 25V capacitor, and on the flight controller, you can find two dedicated pads for soldering it. The dimensions of both boards are also different, and I'm going to measure them shortly. Besides these differences, these boards are very similar. They both feature an F4 flight controller, a 12A 4-in-1 BLLES ESC that has a peak current of 15A for 5 seconds. They support LHV batteries between 2 to 4 cells, feature a 5V 2.5A BSC, a built-in LC filter, current sensor, and they are both available with the motor connectors pre-soldered or not pre-soldered. In terms of dimensions, the weight of the 412T version, including the battery leads and the XT30 battery connector, is 7.1 grams. The 412 version is a little bit lighter and weighs 6.4 grams. Both boards are using the standard WHOOP 26.5 by 26.5 mm mounting holes. The outer dimensions of the 412 version are 29.2 by 29.2 by 3 mm, not including the micro USB port and 8.6mm including it, and the outer dimensions of the 412T version are 32.5 by 32.5 by 3.1mm not including the micro USB port, and 4.6mm including it. The soldering pads on the flight controllers are positioned differently, so now I'm going to place both connection diagrams next to each other, so if you'd like you can pause the video and check them out. As I mentioned before, the 412T version is more intended to be used with traditional micro frames, but in this video I'm going to use a whoop frame of the Tiny Frog X75, so I'm going to use the 412 version. I'm also using motors with 3 pins JST connectors, so I'm going to solder the motor connectors to the flight controller. Of course, if you already know that you are going to use this type of motors, it's recommended to get the version with the pre-soldered connectors. In case you soldered the motor connectors by yourself, I highly recommend to pay extra attention and make sure that nothing is being shorted. Now I've got the camera, VTX and receiver soldered to the flight controller, and in case you're having issues with your SBUS receiver, make sure that its signal is soldered to the correct pad, and in the case of this receiver, I had to use this uninverted pad, which is located over here. In addition, I can tell you that the soldering pads of the flight controller are very small and not very easy to work with, and I advise to use a good soldering iron such as the TS100, and preferably equip it with a sharp and delicate soldering tip. I do hope that the next version of the 412 board is going to use the same type of soldering pads that are being used on the 412T version, since they are going to make the soldering procedure much easier. Now as you can see I've got everything assembled and I'm going to leave you with some flight footage of this reborn Tiny Frog 75X. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and as always if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.